Welcome to Inexpensive Arms. My name's Steve, and today we're going to take a look at how to taper pin a gas block onto a barrel. All right, why would we taper pin our gas block to our barrel? Well, most people will never see the benefit, to be honest with you. Myself included, likely. I just am OCD about not wanting my gas block to ever work loose, to ever wiggle loose, or to worry about a tiny little set screw providing the tension that the gas block needs. I'm worried about as the barrel heats up and cools down that there could be stresses that are introduced. There could be thread locker that works loose or that uh, burns off. I don't want to ever have to worry about that. And so that's why I taper pin all my gas blocks. It's what the military uses. It provides a very, very secure and tight fit. And it's just never going to work loose. Now the name of this channel is Inexpensive Arms. And I test inexpensive barrels. And in the future I'll be looking at inexpensive parts as well. But it's not worth it for me to send out a 50 or $60 barrel to be pinned uh, at a cost of 50 to $75 by a gunsmith or by a metal worker. It's just not worth it to me. That would double the cost of the barrel and completely negate any of the uh, savings that I'd have. So that's why I pin my barrels myself. Alrighty, so what do you actually need to perform the job? You're gonna need a drill press, a drill press vise, a number 31 carbide jobber drill bit, a number two spiral taper reaming bit, and number two taper pins. All right, let's talk about cost. If you don't own any of the tools already, you can buy a drill press from someplace like Harbor Freight for about $65. You can buy a drill press vise for about $15. The uh, carbide drill bit that I mentioned is gonna cost you about $15. The taper pin uh, reamer will cost you about $15. And you can go to an industrial supply parts store like a McMaster Car Online and buy a bag of 10 taper pins that are solid stainless steel for about $7.5 plus shipping. So if you're starting from absolute scratch, you're going to be looking at about $120 to $30 minimum to start drilling your own, uh, your own gas blocks. That's not worth it for most people. But if you already have some of the parts, if you have a buddy that has a drill press, if you're comfortable taking a little bit of time and doing it yourself, you can still save a significant amount of money over taking it to the uh, your local gunsmith. All right, before I show you any of the footage, let's talk about a couple of considerations, and uh, that'll help you get optimal results. Now, the first consideration is yourself. You gotta honestly ask yourself, am I a dumbass? <laughs> and <laughs> if you are, you might want to think about just sending out the barrel to get it pinned by a gunsmith. All right, next consideration. Uh, you've heard the saying, uh, measure twice, cut once. If I were you, I would measure three or four or five times if, if this is the first time you've done this and uh, before drilling once. Uh, the biggest consideration is going to be making sure that your gas block is aligned properly before you start the procedure. You do not want to uh, misalign your gas block and drill the holes with a misaligned gas block. So to prevent that from happening, make sure that your gas block is aligned perfectly, that your set screws are tightened very, very tightly and securely, and that your barrel is chucked up in the vise very securely with zero wobble. Keep in mind that barrel's profile shifts near the chamber, they're typically a lot bigger than it is as you hit the actual profile of the barrel itself. So keep in mind when you're tightening that barrel down, you want a uniform clamping surface. So for this instance in this barrel, I had to clamp from the gas block to the muzzle end in order to secure it in the vise. And that's just because I know that the diameter doesn't change in that, in that area. I'm able to lay it flat, get that gas block nice and perpendicular for a straight hole, and uh, know that nothing's gonna shift or wobble on me. There's nothing worse than introducing wobble through the vibration of the drill press as it operates or from the downward pressure of the drill bit as you're trying to cut through the, uh, the, outside, uh, the outside of the gas block. If you have two different size surfaces chucked up in that vise, when you introduce any of those variables, there will be shift and it will affect the professional look of your gas block. All right, lastly, keep in mind when you're drilling, you're drilling through a gas block that was designed with set screws. So unless you want to drill through one of the set screws, which I do not recommend, you need to make sure that your drill will be passing through the space in between the two set screws. All right, so here we are all chucked up in my drill press and you'll note the uh, wood blocks on either end. And you'll also note that I am using the 
muzzle end inside the vise and that's for the simple reason as I said before that barrel area is the same width and so it's easy to lock it down tight. Um, I set it up pretty tightly inside there. I made sure that I was sitting at a 90 degree angle to uh, from, from the bottom and everything's all aligned. One thing that you will note is the drill bit is choked up really 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 high inside that drill bit arbor. There's only about a half an inch of it poking out. And the reason for that is, is this particular uh, gas block is not designed to be drilled through. It's a set, set screw. So what happens is, it's not a flat surface you're drilling, so the drill bit has a tendency to deflect downwards. So to mitigate that, for the first initial drill, uh, drill that I, uh, first initial uh, shot that I do with the drill, when I'm breaking through the surface and trying to get a straight line, I choke up that drill bit as much as possible. You don't want to over tighten it because again it's carbide and you could crack it. But if you do this you're going to have minimal uh, deflection and it's going to just chatter a lot less and make a much cleaner hole going in. So something to keep in mind. Alright so here I am starting up the uh, drill press. I gave uh, it just as a cutting oil I used WD-40. There's probably some machinists out there that are cringing right now. I'm sure that you could get tap fluid or some other cutting fluid that would work much better. Uh, I just use what I have. so. Your mileage may vary. Don't don't uh, necessarily take what I do as uh, the gospel. Uh, for the first uh, initial cut, you can see I'm moving the uh, drill bit very slowly down to where it's barely scraping the surface. Okay, and that's important because, as I said, you do not want that drill bit to deflect. You want it to chip away that top surface, especially if it's a nitrate coated surface. And then once it's chipped through, then you can put a little bit more pressure on and slowly uh, bring it to bear. But the biggest problem that you're going to run into and uh, that most people will have problems with is as you push it down, if you feed it too fast, that drill bit will just push down and deflect downwards and then it'll throw off your entire, uh, your entire hole. So I'm starting to break through the surface at this point. You can see the metal shavings start coming up. Normally I'd have an air compressor, but when I filmed this, I had uh, planned on using the camera on my, my phone, sorry, the microphone on my cam on my uh, phone. Um, I didn't want to have the loud compressor kicking in, blocking out everything I said. As it turns out, I'm re-recording over this anyway, so that was a non-issue. I should have just left it on. It would have sped this up quite a bit. Every so often, just knock off the shavings, clean up the hole. And you can see we've got a very nice pilot hole right here, which is exactly what we want. And again, I'm just going very nice and very easy. I've got a very slow spindle speed on the drill. There may be some machinists that can uh, chime in. I don't know what the uh, proper feed rate would be on something like this. My experience is, though, that those carbide bits are so brittle, you just want to put minimal pressure and just kind of let it scrape its way through, and it'll do fine. It'll last forever. Uh, but when you try and force things, that's when the tip of the drill bit will snap off. That's when uh, you're going to be trying to dig out a broken drill bit out of a hole you drilled, and it's just no fun at all. All right, so as I continue, you'll notice that sometimes the camera angle shakes a little bit. I was holding the uh, camera faced at what I thought was the uh, the cutting surface at the same time as trying to very gingerly cut through. Uh, I apologize if occasionally there's, uh, there's a little bit of shakiness. I should have set up on, uh, set this up on a tripod, but I my battery was dying. I didn't really have time, and I just figured I'd kind of power through it. So, you know, this will be an exercise in frustration for some of you guys that are watching every little thing. But again, the bottom line is minimal pressure. Just kind of let the uh, the drill do its thing. You'll notice the shavings coming up. You'll feel the pressure uh, as you pull down on the uh, the drill drill press lever. And you'll just kind of get a feel for how fast you can go. The biggest thing is you just do not want to snap that bit. Again, every so often, just pull it up, clean it out, squirt another little bit of oil down into uh, down into the hole, and continue on. Now you can notice here that I'm uh, starting to cut down just almost to the point where the arbor is uh, is, is uh, hitting the uh, the top of the gas block. I'll continue just a little bit further and uh, go from there. Alrighty, so cleaned up that tip, gave another uh, squirt, and uh, continued onward and forwards. Now one thing to keep in mind is um, in addition to the, uh, the actual worries about deflection itself, um, I've got a cheap drill press. There's a little bit of slop in it, so one of the things you're going to find is there's just the tiniest bit of wobble in that drill bit as well. It's not perfectly uh, concentric. 
And so you want to watch your feed rate on a drill bit like this just because um, it has a tendency to just be slightly, ever so slightly wider. And you can kind of feel a little bit of vibration coming up as you push down on it. You'll hear a little bit of chirping of the metal. And uh, that's just something to watch out for. So again, I'm just going nice and easy. And again, I'm sure there are machinists out here that are laughing that could uh, punch through this in, I don't know, 30 seconds to a, to a minute and I have a nice perfect clean hole. I'm not one of those. Every time I try and hurry things up, I end up uh, snapping off a drill bit. So I tend to take uh, five to 10 minutes usually for uh, drilling a hole and then another couple minutes reaming it out just to make sure it's perfect. So I drilled as much as I could without the bottom of the arbor that's holding onto the drill bit rubbing against the top of the gas block. That's about as far as I could make it. And so as a result, I eased up, I loosened up the chuck, I dropped the drill bit down a little bit more. As you can see, I've now got more exposed drill bit. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that up and start drilling again. Again, nice and easy does it. And I'll show you uh, the last thing that I wanted to point out, um, just a slow, constant pressure. But right before you break through, that's uh, a critical juncture. The reason being, that's when the drill bit will tend to seize up a little bit and you have a greater chance of snapping the drill bit. So you want to be real careful right as the drill bit's about to break through on the other end. So we're about to break through at this point. Um, started up the drill. Again, just be very, very careful. Um, if your drill bit gets seized up, this is the place it's going to happen in my experience. There could be some machinists out there that are rolling their eyes. Uh, it's just been my experience that that edge right there, if you push just a little bit too fast, it'll seize up the tip and you'll snap the, uh, the drill bit right off. So just take it nice and slow and you'll be fine. Just barely, barely easing it through there. And once I break through all the way, I can raise and lower it a couple of times just to clean out the hole just a little bit. And we'll blow that hole out um, right before we ream it. And so there we go. Got a nice clean hole on both ends all the way through and we are ready to ream. All right, so we're all chucked up and uh, ready to start reaming our hole. I've got a number two uh, spiral reamer all chucked up. And uh, one thing I found is if you have a faster spindle speed at this point uh, than, than you did when you were drilling, it's going to be better off. It seems like it'll go a lot faster. The uh, reamer works a lot better at that point too. Just be real careful dropping it down so that you don't uh, seize and grab onto uh, to the hole. Matter of fact, you can actually use a hand drill at this point and just kind of let it guide itself through and it'll be fine. I just was all set up for the drill uh, drill press, so that's what I used. So the one thing to keep in mind is uh, you'd rather under ream and fit a couple of times than ream too big and then you're, uh, it's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Um, so what you need to do is just, just every couple of seconds, test out the fit of a pin, push it through, push it back. Um, eventually you get to the point where you know about how deep you need to go with the reamer to uh, make a good fit with your taper pin. But if this is the first time you've done it, it's real easy to uh, ream just a little bit too uh, too big and uh, bite into the barrel just a little bit too big. So just take your time, go easy, fit every so often, and uh, make sure that you uh, don't ream quite as far as you think you need to because you need to tap that last eighth, eighth of an inch or so in uh, with a uh, roll punch. So that'll allow you to uh, get the tension that you need without over over uh, penetrating on the uh, on the taper pin. All right, so this is the finished product. I drilled uh, everything through, fitted it. And you're gonna notice that this taper pin hole does not have much uh, much depth to it, and that's absolutely fine. You don't need a huge divot in there, uh, especially because this is a 300 blackout barrel, so I've got a thinner wall thickness to work with than I would if this was a 5.56 barrel. Uh, but this will keep it from moving, and uh, last step is just to de degrease everything and uh, get it all assembled back together. And that is how you taper pin a barrel. If you've got a better method or you have more uh, data that you can uh, share with the group, by all means, go ahead and type it down at the bottom, leave a message, leave a comment. Uh, I do appreciate that. I appreciate any subscriptions for anybody that likes this content. Um, the only other thing I would mention is if you look on the bottom, occasionally, and especially with the 300 blackout barrels, since I'm drilling deliberately a little bit lower down on the barrel, um, your pin is going to comparatively be a little bit longer than it otherwise would and so the ends will stick out just a little bit further than they otherwise would. Um, you can trim off the uh, the edge, you can trim the pin off to fit and then uh, just file that down with a Dremel stoning, uh, stoning wheel and it'll look nice and professional. Um, you can't tell that I did it on this one. It looks great and uh, you don't have the nub sticking out quite as far as they otherwise would. But I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I hope it gives you the confidence to uh, experiment a little bit yourself 
and hopefully uh, it'll save somebody some money and uh, give you a fun little hobby to uh, get into. Take care, guys.